like we discussed in the last episode there are certain practical aspects as well to the institution of marriage so since we're on the aspect of practical rights we might as well just get into what the petitioners have argued the petitioners are being represented by senior counsel mr mukul rothiki and he's argued on three aspects one has been equality dignity and privacy okay now uh, i agree with all of his arguments in principle all right but i don't but not in terms of what he has said because i think that a lot of his arguments are very self contradictory if you really scrutinize them so for for example he's talked about equality he said that heterosexuals are equal to homosexuals there was one law which was discriminating against homosexuals which was section 377 that is they were treated at the levels of criminals right obviously criminals are not equal to regular citizens but now since that law has gone they are now on an equal footing because they are on an equal footing they should be given equal rights now my only concern with that argument while right in principle may be problematic because like we discussed the laws that govern heterosexual marriage cannot govern homosexual marriage right we've seen that problem so even if for instance uh, same sex marriage is legalized under the special marriage act you have a gamut of other laws which will be very difficult to reconcile with same sex marriage so i would think that what is needed is a completely separate code which governs them and that exercise can only be done by the parliament but if you think about it if you need a separate code to give them the bouquet of rights that they're asking that that come with legalization of same sex marriages that would have to be regulated completely differently right different standards apply uh, for example custody would be given to the natural guardian of a child which is the mother in a same sex marriage especially if it, it is between a man and a man you would have to decide as to who is the mother right like or who would take that place even in the case of woman and woman like who is who is the mother, the mother. Right. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly so those things are difficult to reconcile with heterosexual with the with the laws governing heterosexual marriages in that sense they are not equal of course of course in principle they should be given the same uh, you know liberties that heterosexual couples have in the same facilities but in this sense because they would have to be governed by a separate law altogether i don't think you can say that uh, they're exactly identical or exactly equal the next he talks about is dignity so he says that despite decriminalization of homosexuality society still looks at homosexuals with disdain so it's all it's all well and good to say you can do whatever you want in your bedroom but the moment we come out in public it's very difficult for us to explain to society what our relationship is okay and uh, this aspect is separate from the practical set of rights that you know he's talking about so there is one the practical rights of insurance tax exemptions uh, you know bequeathing your estate to your partner etc but then there's the other aspect of wanting to explain how to explain your relationship to the people around you so he says that because uh, homosexual couples are seen with a lot of disdain because their relationship cannot be defined in society as such and because they want to lead a life of dignity so homosexual marriages should be recognized and he makes a very interesting argument and he says that sometimes society is not ready for change so the law has to be enacted and the society will follow okay and he gives this example of how when the hindu code was enacted society was not ready for it and yet it was enacted by the parliament he talks about how widow remarriage was not society was not ready for it there were prohibitions within hindu society um but then eventually the parliament had to steamroll it in the 1860s in fact he himself acknowledges that till the 1900 society was not ready but you know here's my problem of course i believe that homosexuals should be given the same dignity that heterosexual couples are given but at the same time you have to understand that if your argument is that i do not want society to look at me with disdain you can't come knocking to the courts for this relief the courts cannot provide you uh, respect in society that has to come from society itself and while his example of widow remarriage is yes of course there were uh, you know problems in hindu society at the same time he himself is saying that till the 1900 society was not willing to accept right so law came in 1860 but till the 1900s 
there was no acceptance so then you cannot say that the law is enacted and society will follow no society brings about that change in itself when it wants to when it is ready the law has absolutely nothing to do with this and the same argument can be extended to uh, you know the navteet singh johar judgment so he said himself that section 377 has been read down homosexuality has been decriminalized but society still looks at us with disdain how do you change it law has changed society has not but at the same time you want to come to the courts to change society once again doesn't make any sense right it it's it's contradictory in itself isn't it but don't you think the process of changing society is something that begins with legal recognition of something as important as uh, marriage or them being included within the institution of marriage because that is the only way to legitimize a relationship in the eyes of the society like you have legitimized the relationship as in jo karna hai karo bas hame mat dikhao theek hai jo karna hai karo behind closed doors right but the moment you legitimize it and included within the institution of marriage don't you think that kick starts the process of society accepting but i think if you're going in that direction then let us begin with a civil union which gives you certain rights that a homosexual couple that a heterosexual couple gets okay i don't think changing the idea of marriage that society knows uh, especially by the judiciary is the way to go about it okay because how often do you see society responding to judgments how often do we take it that well really and like i said i mean his own argument is that right that it has been uh that homosexuality has been decriminalized but homosexual couples are still stigmatized so to get rid of that stigmatization the the way to do that is not to approach the courts for legalizing same sex marriage uh it's also i feel like you are breaking one societal stereotype to conform to another you're breaking the societal stereotype of what a marriage should look like to conform to another societal stereotype which is that a couple should be married right so i think that if one is the aspect of practical rights if you're just looking for practical rights i think a civil union serves your purpose but if you're saying that society must look upon you with dignity i don't think the courts are the right forum for that i think it will change when it changes and i think it is changing you know uh, vivek ranjan agnihotri someone who is seen as you know a very pro hindu voice wrote in the indian express about how same sex marriage should be legalized so there are there is change right uh, it's and it's coming from not just your left it's also coming from the non left and it's also coming from corners that have previously been denigrated as conservative as orthodox dogmatic unchanging so that change is coming but i think that when you do this you antagonize the community especially given the arguments that they are making in the sense that any time there is an evil in hindu society it's always the fault of hindu society but any time there is any sort of progress that hindu society makes it's actually the it actually should be credited to the judgment so that is that has been the argument he talks about widow remarriage and he says that oh look widow remarriage was not accepted in hindu society back in the 1860s and the parliament still had to forge ahead but when you when he talks about the navteet singh johar judgment having actually um you know change the way society perceives homosexual couples that is credited to the judgment it's not credited to the evolution of society and their tolerance and their acceptance so no matter what we do hindu society cannot win right so if it is if we are tolerant if we are accepting a credit of that tolerance goes to judicial change or parliamentary change if we are intolerant and not accepting then that's completely on us that in itself is slightly contradictory i felt okay so but this is with all due respect to anyone i mean i do not mean to offend or uh i criticize of course i'm just this is just my opinion hmm. on and this is the way how i heard the arguments and how i perceived them so two out of the three arguments you've covered one was equality one was dignity right what else has he uh talked about so the, so the third aspect is privacy okay he said that the right to marry is a fundamental aspect of the right to privacy it's protected by whatever the basic structure of the constitution for section 377 i understand that argument right you you can't interfere in somebody's bedroom you can't go that far the state cannot regulate what you do 
in the confines of your own house in the confines of your own room but the state should be allowed to regulate societal institutions that are governing everyday life so i don't think that the right to privacy could extend to changing the definition of marriage itself but isn't that isn't he directly quoting uh, the supreme court judgment that legalized homosexuality yeah he's quoting from navdeep singh johar he's quoting from puttasami put to sami he's uh, and the judgment has said very clearly also so my position is not uh, on the legal grounds because i do think that there are legal grounds put to sami has read, said very clearly that joint the family life the sanctity of the home the right to marriage all of these are fundamental aspects of the right to privacy so there are there are very cogent legal grounds and he is right in that aspect but i f- i feel like logically speaking if you have to really scrutinize you know what is being said in the position of the petitioners i think that perhaps it does not make too much sense to extend the right to privacy to the right of marriage sure you have a right to choose your partner and that may be uh, you know counted within uh, your right to privacy because it makes sense right who you marry is n- nobody else's business but that who you marry clause should be within the four corners of what a marriage is you cannot step outside of the definition and if you're choosing to do so then you're changing the institution of marriage itself and that becomes somebody else's business it's not your business alone so it's not your right to privacy alone i think this is a societal question hmm. uh, which is why i think a separate law for recognizing same sex marriage has to be enacted i think because it it cannot be done by tweaking heterosexual laws 